So today we're going to be doing a film review called The Family, and it is on Netflix. Um, you can call it a film, a documentary. Um, but the thing with this is that it wasn't exactly the most popular documentary on Netflix, but it was most definitely a very interesting one that I found. And that's why I want to talk about it today, because it provided a ridiculous amount of insight into the inner workings of how a lot of things really happen politically in Washington, D.C., so the film itself starts by talking about the fact that like many other groups or brotherhoods of sorts, uh, it's all about the camaraderie more than anything else. But just like many other brotherhoods, this is just the way that they test new recruits to see how committed they are before they move these recruits up into the higher levels of what is officially called the fellowship on paper, or as the higher level members refer to it, the family. So the family, which was largely made influential by a man named Doug Coe, is heavily inspired by the philosophy that the more invisible they remain, the more powerful they are. They claim that their view is to spread the message of Jesus and to use Jesus to bring peace to countries in which America is at odds with politically. But as I will explain a little bit later in this segment, that isn't always the case. There is a ton of exploitation going on here and I will explain shortly. The family delves heavily into the ideology that church and state should be intertwined, not explicitly, but in a manner that can be kept under wraps entirely. However, this completely goes against the First Amendment, which is actually quoted as being the separation of church and state. So Doug Coe, who passed away only a few years ago, again, who heavily influenced the entire family or the fellowship, had constantly used the examples to other members of both Hitler and the Italian Mafia with regards to the bond in which they form amongst one another. And when you become a member of this cult, you are essentially bloodbound. The only difference between these groups in the mind of Doug Coe was that Jesus was on their side. This is a relatively common psychological phenomenon of this rationalization of wrongdoing on the basis of religious morality or virtue. Now, to question how much Mr. Cole actually believed in what he was saying would be an entirely different discussion to be had. But many who knew him claimed that he actually believed in what he was doing. It was more so other members of the family who sought to exploit its range of influence. Now, what kind of power did they have? The family had power all over the world and believed in a philosophy that they called, quote, going directly to the King Wolf. This phrase boils down to the thought that they believed in going directly to the leader of countries, regardless if they were dictators, murderers, author authoritarians, kings, or whomever, because they believed that God had chosen them to be in power, and so all of their horrendous actions could be forgiven. And so the family reached out to these leaders directly, because if they could influence these leaders through Jesus, as they claimed, then the people of that country would follow. Hence, that is where the Wolf King philosophy comes from. If you influence the Wolf King, then the sheep will get in line real quickly. And that is something that motivates them even to this day. So the intriguing yet also scary thing about all of this is that this kind of power could be wielded for both good and evil. And because religion was thrown into their ideology and motivation so often, a lot of people found it very difficult as to what they could decipher to be truthful, to be quite frank. Another very important thing to note about the family, which by the way still exists as I mentioned earlier, is that they transcend time in a certain sense. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that they're not limited to any given political term that congressmen, governors, senators, and presidents are. In this way, the family essentially operates outside the confinements of government regulations to influence and manipulate government into alterations of long-lasting legislature, and so their influence can be felt progressively through the years. A good example of their influence is the National Prayer Breakfast. This was something that was started by Doug Coe himself. This is essentially a yearly affirmation that church and state are merged, regardless of what is printed on paper, Again, I'm referring to the First Amendment. Again, this entirely defies everything that the Founding Fathers claimed to have written down and stood for. The National Prayer Breakfast has been attended by every single president of the United States since Eisenhower. It's not an open invitation, but rather you must be invited by the fellowship, or as they refer to themselves in reality, the family. And what's extremely interesting about this is that they're invisible by hiding in plain fucking sight. 
and that is what I find incredible. Many refer to the National Prayer Breakfast as an off-the-books de facto lobbying weekend because many world leaders attend, which is something I find equally incredible. And for those who don't attend due to fear of too much press and attention, they send representatives on their behalf, Putin being one of them, just as an example. One thing I must also note is that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party mean absolutely nothing to the family because all are accepted and they don't let the difference in agenda of political parties get in the way of their own agenda. However, most politicians that tend to flock to joining the family tend to be white evangelical Republicans. Although there are some Democrats that are involved, the vast majority are Republicans. Now, what is the family's agenda exactly? This I find to be the most interesting part of them because their agenda is to spread the word of Jesus across the world, or so they claim. And so through the use of Jesus' name, they actually push more financial agendas than anything, seemingly under the guise of religious righteousness. So for example, they'll meet with, say, a brutal dictator, uh, let's just say at the time uh, which they did actually meet with Gaddafi, whose country has resources that could help add to America's wealth, and they will use the name of Jesus to find a way to mend or grow their relationship with this dictator, and suddenly a flow of arms dealing, oil expo uh, expo exportation, sorry, and money laundering begins. And so this loops back to my point earlier in the segment, which is that the family, although may not be malicious by nature, tend to exploit the name of Jesus in order to make those in power much more powerful. And the family also believes that those in power, now get this, those in power are the chosen ones. And so no matter how horrendous the crimes any of these fucking leaders have committed, it is entirely overlooked simply because the family believes that they have been, quote, chosen by God. They also see democracy as somewhat of a rebellion in a certain sense. And this is demonstrated by the fact that the countries they attempt to influence are those in which local governments are in a constant struggle with their own people because the government does not want a democracy, but the people want a free and open democracy. When in reality, the government wants some form of a fascist authoritarian ruling under the guise or disguise of what they would claim to the world to be a democracy. The family also realized that influencing third world countries actually proved to be more influential than many might think because when a handful of third world countries are influenced, that influence slowly begins to trickle into, over into other countries and their states of democracy and their states of their economics. And the thing is, is you can't help but wonder if the family uses this deceptive form of exploiting Jesus' name to push their influence and agenda around the world. And by doing so, getting what they want, which, it, which in turn proves to be extremely beneficial for many American politicians and private interest groups. One example would be that the family thinks of themselves as rather not an embodiment, but an incubator of sorts that brings world leaders together and sort of whispers in the ear of both sides of the leaders, or both leaders, and attempts to influence them in a certain agenda that they have received from back home, or agendas of the family that, uh, agendas of the family that they want to push themselves. And that's what I also found very intriguing. The thing is, is that it's incredible how these politicians, who in some cases are members of the family, can operate entirely against an amendment. It doesn't matter what kind of amendment, but the fact that they can operate against, in this case, the First Amendment, which is the separation of church and state, is completely fucked up. Now, I also have to note that some members of the family have been jailed and sent to prison for a handful of years due to the fact that they've been caught flying overseas on private jets and whatnot, paid for by their corporation named The Fellowship, which is, by the way, considered a non-profit, but that's a little bit of an icky area too. And they fly overseas, essentially meeting with leaders completely off the books, sort of, in a way, back-channeling. And that is something that I found to be very, very... I don't even want to use the word interesting, but rather fucked up for lack of a better term because they know they're not supposed to be doing this but under the guise of working in Jesus's name they feel that everything is right 
and they cannot do no wrong because they have been chosen by God. And so I urge everybody to go check this film or documentary out on Netflix. It is called The Family. It is a four or five episode mini series of sorts. And it is extremely intriguing because they're hiding in plain sight. And what I have described now is just what we know about them. But to understand their political reach and influence, I would encourage you to go watch it for yourselves.